When it's all said and done, I want everybody to remember E5 as the the underdog who who made it possible, who made who made it possible to give back when his upbringings didn't require a lot of giving. You know, I want people to you know let it be known that there's a way, there's a way. If you feel like you've hit a wall, keep going. Keep on, hit another wall, you know what I'm saying? Just keep climbing that mountain because eventually you won't get to the top. And I want people to remember E5 as a, a loving, caring person, man, who just, you know, who actually cares and wants to make a difference, you know? My name is Elm Rodriguez. I'm from Harlem, New York. I go by E5. I'm currently at the University of Oklahoma Science and Arts, transferred from Denver University, and I'm with Dream Basketball. The risky business of going against the grain. The reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. On the head. It's radicals, you know what I'm saying? What age were you introduced to the game of basketball? I was introduced to the game of basketball at the age of five by my great grandfather, Rafael Reynoso. What does basketball mean to you? Basketball is literally everything to me. It's what I breathe, what I, it's why I wake up in the morning, and it's why I go to sleep, really, too. It's work. Basketball is just work to me, it's motivation. Growing up, what was your basketball journey like? What was the starting out? What was your process? Um, you know, growing up, I was just living in the moment. I ain't really ever see myself, you know, going to college, playing ball. I've always wanted to go to the NBA, but I, it was something that was stopping me. I don't necessarily know if it was like my surroundings or like my, you know, the motivation I had around me, but it was a sign I was doing in the moment. And it was something that I wasn't really thinking about like long term, it was something that I was just doing in the moment and kind of like having having like my surroundings, like having a mom and dad who didn't really know too much about basketball kind of like took that away from me just because I didn't know whether, like I didn't know if I was going to be successful at it or not, so. Who are some of the people in your life that motivate you to have your dreams? Honestly, First, it was my great grandfather, just cause he would, you know, take me to the park, you know, try to introduce me to, you know, certain people at the park, saying that I was pretty good at the game. Um, and then my absolutely is like my family and friends. That's those are the main people who actually like motivate me to be great and continue doing what I do. You know. What is your dream? My dream is to be an inspiration to the young ones and actually like play professionally and just do whatever I can with that resume, you know? So I really want to go, I really want to play professionally. I really do want to play professionally and just show that there's a way coming out of a city like New York, you know? There's a lot of underdogs. What kind of work ethic do you think it takes to make your dream happen? You just got to live and breathe it. You know what I'm saying? Everything you, you do has to have a purpose, you know? Um, whether that be eating, whether that be waking up, whether that be, you know, creating a schedule for yourself, you just have to do it consecutively. They say it takes about 21 days to change a habit. Well, you know what I'm saying? If you want to get to where you want to go, you really got to do things consecutively, you know, more than 28 days. It takes 10,000 hours to perfect uh, what you do, so that's just consistent work and just being motivated, self-motivated. Cause at the end of the day, you you gotta do it. So. How committed are you to your dream? I'm very committed. Like I'm very committed. Um, in the sense that I I know where I came from, and I you know I know where I want to be. It's just a matter of me just taking action and doing. Everything, like I said again, with a purpose. Like I, I, I want to be great. I want to be great, and it takes a lot of work to be great. And that goes by like the people you surround yourself with. Like you are who you you hang out with, to be honest. 
And you are, you know, whatever you do, it has to have a purpose. I'm so committed to the point where sometimes I can't even function right. Like sometimes I feel like if I do something, if I do one thing one way, it's going to affect the way I play or it's going to affect the way I talk to somebody or, you know, it's just commitment is everything to me. I mean, speaking about the company you keep, with the, with the rising crime rate right now in New York City, what would be your advice to young basketball players trying to pursue their dreams and stay on task? Hang around people that's motivated, that's self-motivated. You know what I'm saying? When you, they say when you surround yourself with millionaires, you're bound to become a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? If you surround yourself with people that have dreams, your dreams are going to fall into place, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just one of those things where it's like a law of attraction. You attract what you, what you put out there, you know what I'm saying? If you're a good person, a good vibe, you're going to attract good vibey people, you know what I'm saying? And it's one of those things where I feel like my circle, we, we all self-motivated, we work hard, and that's, that's just the kind of people we are. We, we wanna, we're going to grow and we will, you know? What actions do you take on a daily basis to achieve your dreams? Actions that I take on a daily basis, I just find every way to better myself. Um, I I call I call my bro every day. Um, I call one of my bros actually named Star, and we, you know he always asks me like what you know basically like what did you do today to make yourself better? And I said simply like I watch a YouTube video, um, kind of like. I say like, I watch a YouTube video. Oh, today I wanna learn how to dribble with my right hand better. You know what I'm saying? I watch a YouTube video, I go do it, and I come back and I just you know sit there think, and I do something else. You know, just to make I'm always trying to better myself. It, it doesn't matter what it is, like whether that be you know working on a form or just just. Walking, walking a longer distance or running a longer distance, it's, just, it's oh, I'm always doing something. I'm never just there, just sitting down. I'm always doing something, trying to make myself better, try to make others better around me. How did COVID nineteen affect your basketball season? It affected it a lot, to be honest. It's been teams like canceling on us left and right. Um, you know, it's been affecting our workout time in the gym. Like it's, it, it's taking a lot. You know. Stamina, it's, it's taking a lot from my stamina. I try to, you know, I try to run and I try to do things on the side, but it's just taking like a lot of, just like motivation, kind of. Not necessarily motivation, but it's taking a lot of like mental breakdowns. Like I've been, I've, I've, during this pandemic, I've mentally broken down a lot. Like, it made me think like, yo, is this it? Like, is there anything else to it? Or, or is this going to be the rest of our lives, you know? Can, am I going to be able to play professionally or is coronavirus going to be another excuse towards it, you know? So I feel like it's taking a lot from me and, and my basketball. How do you see yourself and then how do you see New York City basketball going forward after COVID-19? Well, right now, I'm, I'm a little bit iffy. One thing I feel like New York should do is not charge kids to be in the gym. You know what I'm saying? We're going to better ourselves. You know, we know New York City is probably like one of the hardest cities to grow up in. And also being a black native from New York City, it's hard to grow up out here. And you're charging kids $20, $15 a day to work out, you know what I'm saying? Or to just be in the gym and play. I feel like we're going to better ourselves in the future and now. If we think about longevity, I feel like that's something we got to take into consideration. Just for the simple fact that, you know, there's other states I've been to where like kids could just walk into the gym and not have to worry about nothing. They could get their shots up for the day and go home and go about their day. But New York City, I feel like we gotta do better at that. But I definitely do see New York in a better, you know, spot after the coronavirus, after the pandemic. Just for the fact I feel like we're gonna get back on our feet. There's gonna be a lot of tournaments back up and kids are gonna be out there um, with the ability to make a name for themselves. What advice would you have for kids that are facing the same kind of obstacles, that are facing those obstacles? Um, the lack of accessibilities to gyms and places to work out, especially now with the change in weather, so you can't really work out outside. 
what kind of advice or what would you say to these kids as far as what kind of tips or advice would you give them to stay on top of their games and what can they do to maintain, you know what I mean, the level they're on and try to still try to excel to the next level? Absolutely. I would say even though you, f you may feel like you hit a wall, don't stop. Don't use that as an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Everybody goes through something, and this is something that we're all in together right now. Don't let the pandemic or, you know, not you not being able to shoot on a hoop as an excuse to not bettering yourself. You know, there's an opportunity every day, whether that be doing 100 push-ups, 200 push-ups. You got better. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things where you just can't use that as an excuse to not better yourself and move forward with the game. There's so much things you could do with the game to, you know, keep your body in shape, keep yourself healthy, eating the right things, putting the right things in your stomach to, you know, better yourself, so. Sure. Where did you first start playing basketball? What school, what was your first school to play basketball for? Well, I started, if we going, if we talking about middle school right now, I went to PS 180. Yeah, where did your basketball yeah. career start? My basketball career started in middle school. That was, as a matter of fact, I started in a camp. It was called Keep Your Head Up Camp. And that's where I, I, I met one of my long-term friends, Terrell Robinson. Like, that's, that's my bro. And, and that's, when we, that's when I first started taking basketball series. I actually won MVP at that camp. Trophy taller than me at the time. And that's when I felt like, yo, I could actually do something. It was right behind Grant Projects. Like, that's when I felt like I could actually do something with the game of basketball. And from there, you know, I, I went to middle school. Um, on 120 of PS 180, but it really started kicking off in high school. The only problem was that in high school, I went from high school to high school to high school. Like I, I didn't made a lot of sacrifices, you know, just to to get just to keep myself going, you know. And where in New York is this 120 of? Grant, uh, well yeah, Grant was actually Grant Project's on 125th, and um, Harlem, you know the vibes, like and. That's, that's basically where everything took over. It started in Harlem, and you know we started going state to state. We started traveling with it. I went to school. I went to three different high schools. I went to Park East High School on the east side. I mean, growing up in Harlem, Harlem is like the mecca of New York City basketball with Rucker Park being what it was back in the day. Right. And then, you know, in the past few years, you can say that Dykeman kind of took the torch, you know what I'm saying, carried on the torch from Rucker. As far as the new generation, absolutely. You know, what is your best experience and what's your best memory from New York City basketball growing up in Harlem? Like, what's what's one of your top two memories being around Rucker Park or Dykeman? Number one is Dykeman. You know what I'm saying? Like Dykeman really, not for nothing. Dykeman kind of changed my life. It was one of those things where you had, you know, you had a, the Jelly Fam crew. You had, you know, the what's the Jelly Fam? You got Zay Wash, you got Leandre, you got all those, all those cats, JQ. Um, at the time, it was like very hot in the city. And like, it was one of those things where you wanted to be like them. You wanted to be a part of the crew. You would do anything to like be a part of the crew and stuff like that. I, at that time, if I'm being real, I didn't think I was good enough, but I had to like, you know, put it to the test. I feel like I was one of the top guards in the city. And I feel like, if not the best guard in the city, just because I was able, I'm. I'm bouncy, I'm crafty, and I can shoot the ball, and I'm a lefty at that. So I was actually given an opportunity to go play in Dykeman by a guy named Trev James, who runs Northeast Basketball in Jersey. And he had called me, he's like, yo, you want to play for Jelly Day? I'm like, yeah, I want to play for Jelly Day. Come on, like, what's up? Like, Being from New York, and just like, it's kind of like a natural, you know what I'm saying? We grew up just feeling like it's just a natural thing to like, to be hated or, to feel hate or to live with hate. Like, Absolutely. How do you maintain or how would you, what kind of advice would you give people and like, how do you yourself, like see yourself seeing that you slept on, how do you like keep a clear head and like stay focused? Absolutely. There's in not- situations like that. The way you keep a clear head is being content with the fact that there's nothing wrong with being an underdog. If anything, you should appreciate those moments. You know what I'm saying? Being slept on because one thing that I've seen is People start coming around when you get love, but they're not there to celebrate all the hard work you're putting in to get to that moment. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things where there's nothing wrong with being an underdog. If you're being slept on, that's great. That's good. I mean, if you're looking at if you're looking at NBA 
now so you got superstars like Curry that went to Davidson, Damian Little went to Weber State, and those are guys that are being praised and you know, cause they went to mid-major colleges and they wasn't ranked coming out of high school and stuff like that. You know, so I, I really appreciate those type of guys. My advice right now that if you are underdog in New York City and you have goals and dreams, you keep keep at it. Cause you just never know where it's gonna take you. What's your definition of underdog? Like, what is an underdog to you? Underdog to me is somebody that's kind of like, how can I say? Somebody that, that, that is not being shown the same amount of appreciation that a non-underdog is getting. And that'd be recognition. When you have recognition, you have easy accessibility to the gym. You have easy access to gyms. You have easy access to trainers and you know stuff like that. When you are underdog, you don't, you don't really get that type of treatment. You have to beg, you have to ask, you have to, you know, just, you have to work 10 times harder than a person that's not an underdog has. So you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, that, it's, it's just that access you have to certain things. And that for me, I didn't have no type of access. I wasn't being hit up by trainers. And every time I would hit up a trainer, um, they would say, nah, we, we don't, we, you're not, you, they would tell me, actually, you're not good enough. Like, but I'm, and then in my mind, I'm like, how do, how do you know that? Like, you never, you never gave me a shot. I could say one person that did give me a shot in New York City was oh, Mega. Mega really, Mega really, like, gave me a shot. I don't know if y'all, y'all know who Mega, but Mega Wildcats, he, yeah. Mega is the strong, bulky trainer, man. He gave me a shot. Like, he's seen something in me that I don't think nobody else seen in me. It kind of like worked out, you know, in my favor, so. At what point did you realize that you were good enough? To be honest? At what point did you start believing that you were good enough? The point where indictment, really. I started realizing I was good enough for indictment. And if you really want to take it back and try stay, I was doing things at my height at the time. I was like 5'8" windmilling, dunking on guys, like, you know, things things that is not really normal to be doing at a middle school. Like, in middle school, I was really dunking, like, it, they were confused, and nobody knew, nobody knew who I was. I had to really go out there and put myself in tournaments and stuff like that, and at that point, I knew I was good. I took my game to Dykeman, I started playing against these cats, and just, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, I was frying them. Like, at what point did you start feeling like people were starting to recognize all the work you was putting in? Right, so um, I had I had a game indictment right before I left to, you know what I'm saying, right before I left to college, University of Denver. I played against a kid named Storm. It was Star's team. Shout out to you, Star, because now you can get upset about this. But I was, I literally like went in there. Nobody knew who E5 was. Like even Cha-Ching says it in the mixtape, before you leave here today, you're going to know who this kid is. And I went in there and did my did my work. I ended it off with a windmill, and I made sure I let the whole crowd know, like, ask about me. Like, it was one of those things where I just went for thirty a thirty piece right before I left on a plane to school. So that's when they first started to get to know who I was. How did it feel to have Chiching validate your name on the mic and like? Man, having to Chang validate my name was almost like a New York City dream come true. Like that's that's a guy right there that that I give none but full credit to for giving me the name that I got today. Like that man, he has put me in places that I, I, I couldn't have imagined. Like, yeah, he had kids around the city asking me for pictures and, you know, calling me E5, and it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, that, that man really did a lot for me in my career, and shout out to Cha-Ching for that too, so, for real. What kind of role do you think Cha-Ching plays in New York City basketball and younger, younger basketball players trying to come up and make a name for themselves and get known not only New York City, mm -hmm. but nationwide. Nation, Cha-Ching, David is everything. Cha-Ching is everything, to be honest. Like, when people think of New York City basketball, they think of the voice behind it, that's Cha-Ching. Like, you know, you go to Dykeman, you gotta show out. Like, cause if you show out, 
David's gonna make sure you you're like David's gonna make sure you good. You know what I'm saying? What I mean by that, that he's gonna make sure people know in the crowd, like people know your name in the crowd. But now if you not putting in no type of work while you out there, stuff like that, and sorry to you, but that's that's really that's the kind of like the he's the voice of New York City basketball, if I'm being real with y'all. Like, you know. If you made it tomorrow, what will be the first thing you do for yourself? For myself, I'm gonna give my parents a big house, bro. Like out the city. Like I'm not even gonna lie. For myself, I'm gonna buy myself a fire car. And then I'm gonna start, you know what I'm saying, start investing that. Cause I, I need longevity. I need I need my kids' kids to have money. Like it's one of those things. I'm really gonna invest. Like I really don't need nothing but investments. Really. I know that's kind of boring or whatever. That's something people don't want to hear, but it's something that I'm gonna do personally. Like get a nice car, probably a nice crib, straight to investments. How would you describe your style of play? My style of play. I've always been compared to like a Brandon Jennings. You know, lefty, fast, shoot, and it's athletic, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like a Brandon, my, my style of play is really like a Brandon Jennings, you know? So, so what would you say you craft your game after? Um, I really craft, I'm gonna keep Brandon Jennings, believe it or not. Like, I, I like, my style of play is just, like, if you like study my game, it's kind of just like, it's just fast, lefty, just can get by whoever, you know. So I play basketball. I got to, number one, I got to play basketball for myself. Cause, you know what I'm saying? And then I, then, then, you know, first is myself, then it's my family. But I mean, they say family first, but you know, I got to make sure I'm good in order to play for my family. So for the real answer to that is probably my family. You know, I play basketball with my family. Just cause like they've, they've, They've sacrificed everything for me. So every time I'm out there, I make sure I go hard for them. I seen on your Instagram, on your social media, yeah. there's a bus, like the hoop bus. The hoop bus. What's your, what's your relationship with that and how did that come about? So there's a guy named Trey, Overtime Trey, who actually hit me up one day on the gram. He said, yo, bro, uh, this, there's this bus called the hoop bus. Uh, they, you know, they based out of Venice and they was just looking for top guards in the city that probably like that wanted to participate in. Based out of where? Based out of Venice and, and Cali, uh, you know, LA, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, they so basically Trey had introduced my name to them, um, and kind of like I met the whole crew, met the whole guy. I love what they do. You know, they go around different communities, um, either like hooking the basketball courts up or just giving back to the youth. Um, so yeah, so my relationship with them was amazing. I kind of, I did a little, you know, a little modeling and a little bit of everything for them. Dunk for the kids, dunk for the community. I got to play full courts with different communities around New York City. Uh, kind of like just building that relationship opened up a lot of doors for me. In reality, you know, kind of like sparked a lot of things up for me. What exactly is the play? Like, I mean, because from the pictures, what I see is like there's a big basketball. Yeah. And you got a rim on the back of a basket. You got a rim on the back of a bus. Yeah. Like what exactly? Like what do they do? They just pull up on a block. Yeah, they and they. Ball yeah, ball? basically they pull up. Cause to, all I see is you just dunk. Dunk it. Yeah, you nah, for sure. The they basically like pull up to different like communities in different states and kind of like just bring the communities together to just hoop. That's why it's called the hoop bus. It's really, they got a rim in the front, they got a rim in the back. Kids just go around and just shoot. Um, like the purpose of the bus is basically giving back and, you know, showing that basketball brings communities together. And that's, that's what we need, you know, in times like this and, you know, in general, you know, there's hope, so. After all your recognition started going up, what other doors have opened up for you? Like, what other endorsements? Absolutely. So, um, Reebok actually reached out to me. Um, and uh, I've been doing a lot of influential things for, you know, Reebok. Uh, one of the biggest kind of like things that I've done for them was this uh, Allen Iverson giveaway. Here goes the shoe right here. These are the round ball classics right here. Allen Iverson made questions. 
Like, so I did a big giveaway where I was giving a, like 20, 20 pairs of shoes to give away to the community for free. And these are hoop kicks, by the way, by Allen Iverson. Shout out to Allen Iverson. Um, and you know, I, I, I basically like, I'm kind of like a, a model for them. I, I influence kids to, you know, just to get, you know, wear, wear Iversons and hooping them and, you know, kind of like giving away to the community is one thing that if I do ever make it or when I make it, um, it's something I want to do. And it's something that I want to be, you know, known for just giving back. That's, that's one important thing. Like if, if you're being given a lot, might as well share to spread the wealth, you know, to grow others. You can't be the only person going like this. If you if you grow others, like I feel like I feel like you'd be respected even more. So that's something that I'm just trying to show the world, um, kind of like what I do. I like to give back, and that's just me. Cause even though when I was young, I wasn't I wasn't you know giving a lot. I'm using these opportunities right now to to change that. You know, I want to be that change. The hardest uh, thing I probably went through in college basketball. Um, it was probably when my mom and my grandma, they had came to visit me on my first, you know, game. And it's crazy because I believe it was on my birthday. My grandma has breast cancer. So it was, um, for some reason, the doctors were telling her, like, it's not okay to, like, for you to travel. And she still took that risk. And I remember we was up 35. Uh, we was up 35. And I had, I know for a fact I had a good practice. You know, because normally you get your minutes based off the practice. So I know I had a good practice the last, what, two two practices before the game. You know, not saying that I, I always go hard in practice, but specifically those two practices before the game, because I knew my mom was going to come out and surprise me. Um, I played three minutes that game, and we was up 35. I go to the locker room, and coach tells me like that he forgot. He forgot that you know, forgot about me, kind of. And it's okay, because I know being a coach is it's hard. You know, you got to worry about 15 different plays. But that kind of, like, broke me. That broke my, that broke everything in me. Like, because right after the game, my mom and my grandma had to leave to the airport. And it's like, they spent all that time. My grandma done risked her life, you know what I'm saying, to come watch me play three minutes. I went as hard as I can for those three minutes, but still, like, those are three minutes that I could never get back, you know? And that, and at that very moment, I felt, I don't know, I felt broken. Like, if I'm being real with you, I went to the parking lot, I started crying my boy. Like, I started crying every, like, it was the end of the world. Cause now I was gonna go without seeing my mom and my grandma for another eight months before I got, you know, went back home for the break and stuff like that. And that's just, I don't wanna think about that, but yeah, like, but I'm glad I went through that though, cause now, I know right now my, my mom came to one of my games, she's going to be able to watch me play the whole game, so. Yeah. Who are some of the people that gave you a hand along the way in your journey? Along the way in my journey, some of the people that gave me a hand, i say, was mega, for sure. Um, just getting me in the gym and, you know, making sure that I'm, I was always in tournaments and stuff like that. There's a guy named Rob Chin, uh, who was one of my assistant coaches in middle school. He kind of like brought me on to some tournaments. Uh, but yeah, I definitely say Mega, Mega for sure. Um, he opened up that door in Dykeman for me. And Trev, you know, they opened up those doors for me to go out there and just do what I do, just play. <laughs> And there's a there's a there's a lot more that I can name. You know, it's not just those those three. There's there's been a couple more, but I feel like based on my memory and just me, my upbringing, those are guys who've really left a great impact on me in my life. So, what are the three main principles that you learned from basketball? I learned that basketball three three main principles is respect. You know what I'm saying? The the, the respect that you get. Because you play the game of basketball is unbelievable. The network, you meet a lot of different people when you play the game of basketball and you actually, you know, do something with the game. You meet a lot of different people. And also the third one is this is love. You begin you begin to love work, hard work. And that applies to anything in life too, you know? 
but that like you just build a love for the game that it's just unbelievable. So I think those are the three principles that I've I've picked up since I've picked up the basketball. You can follow me on Instagram at Elvin underscore five underscore. Follow me on TikTok too. That's probably like my biggest platform, but yeah, you can follow me there as well. It's the same thing, Elvin underscore five underscore. It's your boy E5 and I'm with Dream Basketball. Holla. Shout out to the basketball.